Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for a sheet load rewind. I hope you'll stick around, see what month we're working with, and find out how I'm going to switch it up. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I know many of you are Sheetload of Cards fans, and some of you have just recently found my channel. So what I have been doing is rewinding back to old issues to just kind of get those back out there, show you how they're put together, and sometimes I switch them up a little bit. Today, we're going to be rewinding back to June 2020, and I'm going to show you how to yield three cards with three pieces of 6x6 pattern paper and some cardstock. The original printable called for 12 by 12 papers and you yielded six cards. So later on, I'll kind of tell you about how I changed those dimensions and I hope that you'll give this a try. If you do, please use the hashtag, hashtag sheetload rewind, as well as the two hashtags that are on the top of the printable. Now, if you don't yet have this edition, I will tell you at the end of the video how you can download it for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. I will also have the original June 2020 sheetload video linked in that description box below, as well as my process. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the supplies I'll be using for today's cards. Besides switching up the pattern paper size and some of the dimensions, I am actually not going to be coloring or stamping with today's cards. Instead, I'll be using some kind of pattern paper for my sentiments and ephemera for my focal points. I will be getting both of those from the latest Not Too Shabby Box of the Month, which it is unfortunately sold out as a complete kit, but if the ephemera and this paper pad are still available, I will have it linked below. For my pattern papers, I chose from the Honey Bear paper pad. I will be using these three for my 6x6 six six papers, and then I got out this one with Be Happy all over the background for my kind of sentiment piece. The box also came with some coordinating ephemera, and even though bees are definitely not my favorite, I know that they're good for the environment, and so my focal point will be one of the little flowers from the kit and one of the little bees. And finally, for the main part, you might have noticed that this month's edition does feature some fishtail banners in the ends of those strips. Now, you can easily cut those by hand, but I will be using my Stampin' Up! Triple Banner Bunch for those. Now, as I add more products and tools during the process, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before we get to that process, I do have a special channel member shout out. I would like to say welcome and thank you to my newest paper trimmer level member, Heather, who is Sunflower Fields Designs. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you as well to all of my channel members. You keep me crafting here on YouTube and Sheetload of Cards free for all. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. Before I go to the voiceover, I do want to talk a little bit about how we're going to be changing the dimensions. Now, as always, I do give single card dimensions on the printable, but we're going to be switching these up a little bit so we can make that 6x6 six six pattern paper work. Instead of covering the background completely with a piece of pattern paper, we're going to change this, which is PPA, to 4 by 5 and a quarter. Now, before I move on to other dimensions, you do not need to worry about writing these down. I will pop them up on screen once I'm done discussing it. You can pause the video and even maybe just write those changes right on your printable. 
For the fishtail banners, originally the pattern paper ones were one and a half inches wide. We are going to make these only one inch wide, but we are going to leave the lengths the same. So one by four and one by five. Now finally for our sentiment area, which again I won't be stamping, instead of one and a half by three, I'm going to do this one and a quarter by three. And then my mats for the other two fishtail banners, instead of being one and three quarters inches wide, they will be one and a quarter inch wide. I'm going to go ahead and pop those up on the screen now. To get started, I'm going to be cutting all three of the 6x6 pattern papers in the same way. I will cut them in three strips. One is 4 inches wide and the last two are each 1 inch wide. These will each then get rotated and cut to the height. That first one that was 4 inches wide gets cut to 5 and a quarter inches tall and the two remaining strips, one gets cut to 4 inches tall and the other one gets cut at 5. I cut those other two pieces in the same exact way. Now because this does add up to six inches across, I didn't do what I call generous cuts. I did try to cut just right at or slightly below the dimension I needed, so I didn't end up with one of those pattern paper strips that was less than one inch or noticeably less than one inch. Next, I brought in the piece that I'm going to be using for kind of the be happy sentiment and I cut this to three inches tall and then I cut it into three sections that were one and a quarter inch wide. Now because I wanted to make sure that my be happy didn't get cut up, that I could see some of the complete sentiment on the finished piece, I did do a little bit of fancy cutting, you know, kind of figuring out on the cutter where would be the best cuts to make. So when all three were done, you could see that be happy completely. The next part I cut were the mats for the pattern paper strips and for this I just needed one piece of black cardstock. I cut two pieces, one that was four and a half inches tall and one that was five and a half inches tall. Then these each got rotated and cut down to their final size of one and a quarter inches. I just made sure I had three from each and the leftover extra just I saved for the next card, but you'll actually see here in just a little bit how I already used up some of the extra. For the card bases, I'm going to be using that same black card stock. I brought in two pieces, but that will actually yield me four card bases. So once I've cut these in half to four and a quarter by 11, I just went ahead and set that fourth piece off to the side to use later. Now you'll see here that I just folded that by hand and off screen those final two, I did use my scoreboard and my bone folder. Before we can start assembling, I do need to get those fishtails in the bottom of the pattern paper and cardstock matte strips. I will be using this Stampin' Up! punch and the smallest section is made for one inch. So on the pattern paper strips in the middle there, I can just use the punch as intended. This makes a quick, easy fishtail, but again, you can always cut these by hand. Now for the other pieces, which are one and a quarter inch wide, there isn't a channel for it. So I just flipped the punch over, centered it as best as I could, and then on the sentiment pieces, I actually decided that was cutting too much off. So I moved it up just a little bit before making the punch. Now I have that same fish tail and I can just keep going with the remaining of those. The only thing I changed for the black cardstock strips was I didn't go ahead and move it up out of there because I knew I already had some extra black cardstock on this length. 
Once all those were punched, I brought in my art glitter glue and my fine tip bottle, and I used this to adhere the pattern paper to the black mats. Now normally you know that I love to use my ATG, but because of those tiny little points, I did want to use some liquid glue so I could get adhesive down there so it would set nicely or adhere nicely. I continued doing this with each of those pattern paper strips onto the black cardstock. Now one thing I did forget to mention, that extra at the top, we will cut that off later. I just have that in the dimensions so that you can get nice even on the bottom left and right. I set those to the side for about five minutes to dry and then I brought in my little Fiskars photo trimmer and I use that to cut the excess cardstock off the top of each fishtail. Now it's time to match up the pieces for each of the cards. Here I just kind of went in a pattern from left to right, making sure that none of the pieces use the same pattern. It was at this point where I realized, you know what, I think the sentiment piece needs a mat too. So I did go ahead and take care of that off screen. Speaking of off screen, I also put some lightweight white cardstock on the inside of each of my card bases so I would have somewhere to write later. Now that all of the pieces are ready, we can get these cards put together. Pattern paper A just gets centered on the card front, and then I use the longest fishtail on the left about a quarter of an inch in from the pattern paper edge. It is aligned with the top of the pattern paper as well. And then I add adhesive to the back of the second or the middle fishtail. And I put this almost all the way off the first fishtail, but there is a little bit of an overlap. Finally, the sentiment piece gets placed just right between those two. I continued putting the other two cards together in the same way, keeping everything nice and flat. Now if you did want dimension, you could always add one or more of these fishtail banners with some foam tape. I brought in the ephemera so I could create my focal points. I started by placing each of the flowers onto the card front. I adhered these down with my art glitter glue and I placed them on the lower left of that middle fishtail piece. Then for some added dimension, I brought in some scraps from foam dots that I had and I added a little piece to the back of each bee. I just thought this gave it a nice little pop on there. I finished the other two cards in the same way, and then I decided, you know what, I'm gonna do a little stamping. Now, since my cards are completely finished, I definitely brought in my Misty for this, just because I don't wanna mess it up at the very end. And what I decided on after I saw the cute stamp sets that came in the kit, I got out the Be Happy that actually matches the sentiment from the pattern paper on the front. And I'm gonna stamp this centered on that white piece of cardstock with some wild dandelion ink. Now it is a new stamp, so I took some of those manufacturer oils off with my fingers. And then because it is a new stamp, and I really only have one chance at this since it's on the inside of the card, I wanted to make sure the ink would not beat up. Sometimes I have that happen with new stamps. So I put down a little bit of Versamark before I went in and inked it up with that yellow ink. And I ended up loving the way this looked. I did the same thing for the other two cards, and here are some close-up looks at the finished trio. I hope you enjoyed this rewind to June 2020 and seeing how I switched it up a little bit. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now let me tell you how you can download the printable. As always, Sheetload of Cards is free to subscribers of my channel. You don't have to sign up for a mailing list or email me any proof. We just go on the honor system here. It's quick, it's easy, it's free. Just click on that red subscribe button below this video. You will find the June 2020 link down in my description box right underneath my list of products. You can click on the link and view it and use it from screen or you can download it to your device and print it.
Below that link, it does say to watch the video for a password, but you watching the video this far is your password. Until my next one, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.